Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you. And welcome back to another vintage gadget test. If you've missed my other gadget tests, I'll put a link down to the playlist down below. I've tested all kinds of interesting gadgets, new and old. Today, we're going to be testing a gadget that comes from 1971. So this machine is 50 years old and it was sent to me by lovely Nikki. Nikki, thank you so much for getting in touch with me via social media to share this machine and to send it to me so kindly. It was originally a friend's parents wedding gift. It is a vertical broiler or a meat toaster. Meat toaster, I tell you, I cannot tell you how excited I am to stick a steak into this machine. I'm sure many of you have seen these viral videos where people take a steak and place it into a regular toaster. It is 100% not recommended. Toaster companies, manufacturers of these appliances, they do not put anything but bread in your toaster. But this one, this appliance, circa 1971, is made for cooking meat. Presto vertical broiler. We even have the original instructions. Brilliant. These are so useful for using these machines that you can no longer find. In great shape, the Presto vertical broiler. Oh my goodness, look at this machine. <laughs> it looks so great. Look at that finish. Press down and pull out. Alrighty. So now we're gonna remove all the cardboard in here. And these are the heating coils, the grill or the cooking basket. And it's spring loaded, so it can adjust to whatever thickness of meat. Removing cardboard from this appliance is giving me flashbacks of the time, the first time I used my air fryer and I forgot to take out the cardboard. And so many of you said, hey, Emmy, take out the cardboard. Yeah, I did. This comes up and that reveals our drip tray. This piece is the reflector. In the instructions it says in the booklet to cover this in foil to make this easier to clean. Okay, now that I've coated it in foil, the reflector's back. So most of the meat recipes require preheating of this machine. And some of them say to open it, to vent it. And that's what these little tabs are to create kind of a medium heat or a low heat. Some recipes, including the bacon recipe, say there's no preheating required at all. I'm gonna be cooking a porterhouse steak. And for that recipe, it says to preheat it with the vents closed. I really appreciate that this machine comes with a recipe booklet. <laughs> I find when you get appliances these days, you're really lucky to even get instructions, let alone detailed recipes that were designed to work with the appliance. It says it takes about five minutes to preheat or when the coils turn cherry red. So this is working. I can feel it. It is getting quite hot. You can see why they don't want you to do this underneath a cabinet or cupboard. Got a beautiful T-bone steak here. Lots of salt and lots of black pepper. And that's all I'm gonna do. Give this a flip and get the other side. We place our steak right in the middle of there and close it up. For a rare steak, it says broil eight minutes, medium 10. So I like mine medium rare. So I'm gonna split the difference and go for nine minutes. Ooh, I can see little waves of heat here. This thing is ripping hot. When I started heating it up initially, it had that kind of slightly toasted appliance smell, but not toxic smelling. Sometimes when you heat some of these appliances, they smell horrible, like toxic melting plastic. This does not. It just had that initial kind of toaster smell and that's it. Here we go into the machine. Drop it in there. Okay. Set our timer. We'll see what happens after nine minutes. Okay. I'm going to give you a peek of what's happening here. This is very cool. So the whole premise of this machine is that it cooks evenly. It says it's smokeless and that it cooks both sides at the same time. I'm not going to pull this up to take a peek at it. It says very specifically in the instructions, if you take a peek at it, if you find that it's not cooked enough, that you must unplug it, take a peek at it, 
put the meat back in, then plug it back in. And that is to reduce a fire hazard. So I can see why maybe this machine isn't made anymore. Uh, the fat that is released from the meat, you have hot coils, it could spatter, it could ignite. So I could see why they don't want you to do that. So no peaking, we're just gonna take this out after the full nine minutes and give this a taste. I cannot wait. It is sizzling beautifully. It smells great. We have 42 seconds left and let's take a peek by moving one of these panels. Look at that. So I'm gonna pull it. We've got 18 seconds left. So I'm gonna turn this off. <sighs> da, 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 da. <laughs> so here's our steak. Here's the steak. We have some caramelization here. Not too much on the meat itself. And I really hope this isn't overcooked. So I forgot to mention how I usually like to cook my steaks. I usually like to cook them in a cast iron pan or a nice flat cast iron griddle. I get it screaming hot, season it just like I did here, tons of salt and pepper, and then just put the steak right on there real quick and get a really nice sear. Don't move the meat at all. Just let it sit there right on that hot, hot, hot pan. And it creates beautiful, crust of flavor. It's called fond. It's delicious. And by the way, whenever I wear glasses, I get comments about where I get them. I get all of my glasses from glassesusa.com. If you need a pair of glasses, please click the link down below for a special offer. Oh, I hope it's not overcooked. Oh, for me it is. Look at that. Oh, that's disappointing. <sighs> to me, that is overcooked that is on its way to being well done. There's a little bit of pink in there, but not much. Rats. Let's check over by the bone and see if it's a little less cooked there. Oh, there's some pink in there, but I like mine pinker. Technically, you're supposed to wait for your meat to rest a bit so the juices don't all come out like this. It's a little bit better for me. This is still very much a medium steak. It's Mmm, salty, peppery, and oh so meaty. Delicious. A little overcooked for me. I actually pulled this out at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. So even 6 minutes and 30 seconds, I would start checking on this. This bite's not too bad. That's a medium steak. Mmm. This could have a little bit more fat. I really like my beef to be nicely marbled, but really flavorful, nice and beefy, very well seasoned. I think it really enhances the beefy flavor. Mm -hmm. mm. In terms of cooking a steak, I think I prefer my technique of cooking a steak on a cast iron skillet because you get that beautiful crust and you get that really great caramelized meaty flavor that you don't really get from using this appliance. This is very much, as it says, it's a vertical broiler. You could get a similar effect cooking your steak under the broiler in your oven. It's very mess free and it certainly did not smoke up my space. So there we have it, my lovelies. The vertical broiler, the meat toaster, totally works as advertised, but I think I'll still be cooking my steaks in a cast iron pan, but it totally works, smokeless, heats up beautifully, and it comes in this beautiful avocado green color. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Ow.